Okay, everyone, we've done the first portion of the 3.1 notes, which was converting from y equals mx plus b, which is slope intercept form, to standard form. And you're going to need that for the second part of our note. So go ahead and open up your journal, and we are, open up your notes, sorry, and we are looking at example three, and we're given a graph, and we're trying to write the equation in both slope intercept form and standard form. So remember, we're going to start with slope intercept form because we should know by looking at this graph what is the m okay remember m is slope okay and what is the b which is the y intercept okay so those are the two things we need to know y intercept is usually okay for most people look to see where it intersects the y axis at and we can see that it intersects right there between six and eight so this must be seven y intercept is seven okay now, from the y-intercept to one of the points given here, let's use the x-intercept, we can see our slope is going to be negative. I'm going to go ahead and put the negative. It's decreasing from left to right. So how much is it decreasing? So start from the point on the left. That's where a lot of us get confused. Start with the point on the left, and I'm decreasing how much. You can count, or if you know we're going from 7 to 0, that's a decrease of 7. And I'm going over 4. So our slope is negative 7 fourths. It does not reduce anymore. There is no number that both 7 and 4 are divisible by. So now we can write our slope intercept form. So let's go ahead and write it. y equals m x plus b. Okay. Wonderful. y equals m x plus b. We have our slope here in front of the x where it should be and then our y intercept right next to it. We put a plus because it is a positive y intercept. All right, so now we're going to take that equation. I'm going to write it down again up here. y equals negative 7 fourths x plus 4. I'm sorry, plus 7. And we are going to convert it to standard form. So if you need to go back to look at the front of your notes to see what the steps are, you can. The first step is to get rid of the fractions. So we multiply both sides by the denominator of your fraction. So I'm multiplying both sides by 4. Okay. So 4 times y is 4y. 4 times negative 7 fourths. Now let's remember we can use our calculator to multiply fractions. I'm going to pull that up. 4 times negative, and then control divide makes a fraction, 7 fourths. Okay, hit enter. It is negative 7. So let's go ahead and write that down, negative 7. But don't forget to bring down your equal sign, and it is negative 7, but remember there's also an x with it, so it's negative 7x. And then 4 times 7 is 28, which of course you can also use your calculator if you want to. Now remembering, if we want standard form, the x and the y have to be on the same side, see? So right now, the x is on one side and the y is on the other. So remember we talked about moving the x to the left, and how do we do that? Because it is negative, we're going to do the opposite and add 7x to both sides. So on the right side, we have 28. On the left side, we have a positive 7x and a positive 4y. Because the a value, remember we talked about how the a value has to be positive in standard form. In this case, it is, so we are done. Our standard form is 7x plus 4y equals 28. Okay. So on a test or a quiz or the star test, it could ask you for either of those forms. y equals mx plus b, you only have to identify the slope and the y-intercept. But if all your answer choices are in standard form, you will have to be able to convert. And we're going to practice a lot, so don't stress too much. Let's try another one. Try this next one on your own. Go ahead and pause the video, give it a try, and then unpause the video to see if you're correct. Okay, guys, we've got a real world one here. So if I want to write it in y equals mx plus b, I need the m 
the slope. So let's go ahead and find that. I've got one point already on the y-axis. And if I'm looking really closely, the only other actual point I see is right here at 4104. So we want to see how much is it rising and how much is it running. This is a positive slope. So if I don't know how much it's rising from 32 all the way to 104, I can subtract them in my calculator. 104 minus 32, it increased 72. So let's write that down, it increased 72. That's my rise. And my run, you can see it kind of started at zero and it ran 40. Remember, each of these blocks is going by fives, so it ran 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So when we write our slope, our m, it is rise over run, but this can clearly be reduced. Remember, your calculator, you can always type it in, 72 divided by 40, and we get 9 fifths. So our slope is 9 fifths. Let's write that down, 9 fifths. And our B, our y-intercept, we already identified. Where does it touch the y-axis at? At 32. Okay? So our y-intercept is 32. So now we can write our equation in slope-intercept form. y equals 9, half, 9 fifths x, because 9 fifths was our slope, plus the y-intercept, which was 32. Remember, that part shouldn't be too hard. You need to find these two things and put them in for m and b in the equation. Just replace those two. Now, we also need to know how to convert it. So I'm going to write that equation down again. If you haven't converted this to, sta to standard form on your own, you may want to try it now. Pause the video and try to convert it using the steps that are on the front of these notes. Um, to try and do it on your own. Okay, so pause the video, try it on your own first. Hopefully you've tried it, and now we are just reviewing it. Just like in the last problem, our step is to multiply both sides by the denominator of the fraction. So we're multiplying both sides by 5. 5 times y is 5y. Don't forget to bring down the equal sign, okay? Equals. Now, 5 times 9 fifths. Let's use our handy dandy calculator again. 5 times, oops, that's not a times, times, and then make a fraction, control, divide, 9 fifths. And what do we get? 9. Wonderful. Very easy. Remember, the goal was to get a whole number because our answer cannot have fractions in it. And don't forget that the x is with it. And lastly, 5 times 32, and if that's too big, you can always type it in your calculator. It's 160. Okay, so next step, remember the x and the y have to be on the same side, so I'm subtracting 9x on both sides. What does that look like? Let's see, 9x minus 9x is 0. On this side, we have 160. On this side, we have negative 9x, and that's a positive 5y, so let's put a plus. Are we finished? Is that standard form? Remember, standard form is ax plus by equals c. It's close to standard form. The x and the y are on the same side, but remember, we did say that the a value has to be positive. So to make it positive, we multiply the entire thing by negative 1. So negative 1. And I'm going to go ahead and start writing my answer down here at the bottom. Negative 1 times negative 9x is positive 9x. Negative 1 times 5y is negative 5y. And negative 1 times, ne times 160 is negative 160. And there is standard form. There are no fractions. And the a value is positive now. Notice the numbers did not change. It was still 9, 5, and 160 but all of their signs changed. Because remember, when you multiply something by one, it stays the same. But if I multiply it by negative one, the number stays the same, but the sign changes, okay? If you need some more help on this, make sure to go into tutoring or ask your teacher. We're gonna do plenty of practice, so no need to worry about that. 
Make sure you tape these notes in your journal. And if you have any questions while you're watching the video, make sure to raise your hand, okay? Have a great day, guys. Bye.